Now, when I initially reviewed the Venix V11, I had two major issues with it. First, the quality didn't live up to its 4K claims, and second, it came at a pretty steep price tag, especially when you consider the competition. Well, here we are today with the Venix V11 Pro, its successor. It claims 4K video, 8K photos, but it comes at a steeper price tag. So today, we're going to answer the question as to whether this Venix V11 is actually worth the price tag. Let's see what you get when you purchase the V11 Pro. Inside the carrying case, you'll find a pretty decent controller. It features removable thumbsticks for easy storage, scroll wheels to adjust the digital zoom and gimbal angle, and a built-in phone holder. It's designed to connect directly to your phone and includes Type-C, Lightning, and micro USB cables, so you're covered no matter what device you're using. Next, let's talk about batteries and flight time. You get two 3500 mAh batteries, one pre-installed in the drone, and one spare. They charge via USB-C directly on the side and are advertised to last 40 minutes. However, in my testing, they only lasted around 30 minutes. They also include a set of spare propellers, which is a welcome addition for any drone pilot who knows accidents can happen. But the most compelling reason to buy the V11 Pro is the camera. The previous V11 also claimed 4K video, but the results didn't live up to the promise. This version not only gets an upgraded camera, but also improves stabilization with the three-axis gimbal versus the original's two-axis design. Now let's take a quick look at the Phoenix Fly app, the companion app for the V11 Pro. First off, every time I connected to the drone, I was prompted to watch the first flight guide video. While this might be helpful for beginners, there's no option to skip it for future launches, which quickly becomes a hassle. Another mandatory procedure every time you launch the drone is that you're required to perform a compass calibration. It's not a huge deal and only takes a few moments, but it does slow you down if you're trying to get airborne quickly. On the positive side, launching the drone is simple. All you need to do is slide to start the motors and press the takeoff button. If this isn't your first time flying, you'll want to immediately turn off beginner mode in the settings. Otherwise, you'll be stuck with severely limited range, and I mean well within your line of sight. The app also comes with a handful of features, and I won't get into every single one, since many feel more like gimmicks than anything you'd actually use in the real world. But there are a few that sound promising. Let's start with image follow. Despite its name, this isn't a true follow mode. It's more of a tripod feature that pivots the drone to keep you in view, or at least it tries to. Unfortunately, more often than not, the drone loses track of you. For example, here it is no longer tracking me and instead tracking the bush. It's far from reliable and pretty inconsistent. GPS follow, on the other hand, appears to work as advertised. The drone will follow your position from behind, but keep in mind it does lack obstacle avoidance. So if you plan on using this feature, make sure the drone is high enough in the sky to avoid trees, buildings, or other potential hazards. And lastly, there's interest point, which in theory should allow the drone to orbit a specific area for a very cinematic effect. But in practice, it's hit or miss. Mostly miss. When I tested it, the drone simply went to the sky and then spun around aimlessly, failing to orbit around the area where the drone was focused when the feature was initiated. And although it didn't happen on every flight, we did encounter an instance where the battery level displayed in the app was completely inaccurate after a certain point. The flight started at around 100% and eventually dropped to 52%, where it stayed, right up until an automatic return to home was triggered. I had noticed it early and was expecting this to happen, so I wasn't completely caught off guard, but if you're busy filming and not paying attention, this could be a pretty big inconvenience. And with the app out of the way, it's time to see how this drone performs once it's up in the air. The drone offers three flight modes, camera, normal, and sport. These modes provide flexibility with sport mode delivering enough power to quickly move the drone from point A to point B. However, if you're looking to chase fast moving subjects, this drone isn't necessarily built for that. But overall, the drone flies quite stable. It is pretty sensitive to input, which means you'll need to be deliberate with controls to get a smooth shot. While orbits can be tricky due to its responsive nature, straight line flying is pretty straightforward and predictable. With claims of 4K video resolution and even 8K photos, I had high hopes for the V11 Pro's camera. This should have been a standout feature compared to the original V11, but when it comes to the actual footage, the results don't appear to match the marketing claims. When filming close to your subject, the video quality is pretty decent. However, as the distance increases, the issues become hard to ignore. The image quality quickly degrades and the outer areas not in focus look almost artificial or blurry. For a drone at this price point, this level of quality is a little disappointing. To add to the disappointment, during my first flight, there was a light breeze and the gimbal started acting funny once it was already up in the air. The camera started to tilt and the gimbal started acting unpredictable despite the wind not being really that bad. When it comes to photos, the results don't look much better. While the images are stored at a 8000 by 6000 resolution, they lack the sharpness and detail you'd expect for an image that size. As you zoom in, any clarity 
falls apart. The V11 Pro does introduce the ability to fine tune video settings like white balance, contrast, and saturation directly in the app. While this sounds like a useful addition, in practice it feels more like applying a filter than true manual control over your footage, but it is a step in the right direction. At around $500, the V11 Pro is marketed as a prosumer level drone, but it does fall short of the features and quality expected at this price point. The V11 Pro appears to be a rebranded version of the newly released SJRC F22 S3 Pro model. This is further verified by the fact that even the SJRC app can control the V11 Pro as if it were an F22 S3. If you were hoping like I was that the V11 Pro would be a major upgrade over the original V11 with its camera improvements, it's not. In short, this is what the original V11 should have been, and it should be priced accordingly. This drone could have been a significant leap in the right direction if it included substantial improvements like higher quality video, obstacle avoidance technology, and a more compelling app feature set. If you're looking for a more affordable alternative, Ruko's F11 Pro 2 might be worth checking out. We reviewed it and were pretty impressed with its size and camera. If this review was helpful and you appreciate honest reviews, don't forget to like this video. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing and checking out some of our other content. We'd love to have you along for the journey.